In previous modules, you have learned about the fundamental basics of machine learning, the importance of data, and some evaluation methods. Now it is time to dive into one of our algorithm classes. In this module, we will actually cover two different algorithm classes. Why? Both of them are very well-known classes, which can be used in the supervised learning paradigm, so it seems like a good idea to group them together. So what classes are we going to talk about? We will talk about two different problem settings, regression and classification. For the latter, we will talk about decision trees. But before that, let's have a look at regression. You might remember the term regression from your maths or statistics classes, or from the evaluation module where we briefly touched the topic as well. In any case, let's have a detailed look by starting to talk about the simplest form, linear regression. Let's take an example dataset. For simplicity, let's consider the data to be one-dimensional, and we also want to predict single values. Linear regression aims at finding a function that takes our data points as input and returns the correct prediction as an output. We can visualize this by drawing a straight line which tries to imitate the function behind our data. In mathematical terms, a linear regressing function can be written as y equals to a times x plus b, where y is our output, or prediction, and x is our input. a and b are both parameters which will be learned through a training procedure. But how does this look like again? If we draw a random straight line as our linear function, we can immediately see that some data points are not directly on this line. This means that when we take this data point as input to our function, the output will deviate from the true value. In module four, we have already talked about this concept when we covered evaluation metrics or regression. The deviation of our predicted value and the true value is called error and can be either positive, as you can see in this example, or negative. An immediate intuitive thought would be to say, well, let's just make our function have the least possible error, which is also what we are aiming for with our model. Simply adding the errors, however, is not sufficient as they can be positive or negative. So as an example, if we have two data points and one has an error of plus 100 and the other of minus 100, the sum would be zero, which would mean it is a perfect fit. But clearly, we could do better than that. So, the solution to this is simply take the sum of squared errors. As you have heard in the previous module already as well, we now aim to minimize this error, which means getting it as close to zero as possible. We can now also see why a and b are called learnable parameters of our model. Whenever we change our function to get a smaller sum of squared errors, those parameters are changing accordingly. Now you might have learned in statistics that you can directly compute the optimal solution for a linear regression problem. So where exactly is this training procedure that I have mentioned earlier? Well, linear regression functions are nice and simple to understand, but in some cases we need more powerful, complex functions. And for those, it is rather difficult to directly compute the optimal solution, which is why we need to make use of a different approach. But more on this in just a bit.